Good day, fellow investors. Canadian solar, cheap, peer ratio free, growth, great sector, everything. Let me debunk the story and then you'll have a correct perspective on how to invest in this very attractive stock. So Mikhail just asked on my research platform about Canadian solar, that it has attractive peer ratios, price to book ratios, ridiculous price to book ratios, cheaper than US peers, according to Guru Focus, margin of safety of 66%. Then I went to Seeking Alpha, which is a platform that I often use to get information because if you read 20 articles on a stock, you pretty much know what there is to know, but also what there isn't to know, which is what I will add value likely in this video. And if you watch here, so for this year, buy, 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 strong buy, 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 hold so discussing a little bit the sector which is key but if you look at seeking alpha and by the way if you want a 50 dollar coupon and a seven day free trial for seeking alpha feel free to use my link in the description below it supports the channel and you never know whether the info there might be valuable for you however i warn you i don't use this buying selling info what i use is information in articles i use the transcripts so every presentation earnings call transcript to read a little bit what the management is doing in this case canadian solar what are the questions of the analyst what are the news and then also i like to Check what does the market think about, and here we have the earnings, and especially the earnings estimates, where you can see, okay, this is the current consensus, then expected a little bit lower for the next two years, and then expected to have a P ratio of two for the future as they grow. So, very interesting platform, but again, a warning, don't get confused by the buys. When you write for it, uh, you are obliged to have a conviction of some kind for articles because that's what makes it interesting reads, but get the information, not the conviction. So this is something that I use often. And if we check the stock, it has been trading around 40 for the last two years. But since the last quarter earnings, now we are down 50% over the last few months. If we look at the historical chart, it has been ups and downs alongside the solar trends that were booming and going bust, booming, slowing down, recently boomed again, and now very, very low. But when this happens, and as Michael suggested on the research platform, great community there, you see that now is the time to look at it. And that's exactly what we are going to do. Let me just quickly go through the business, discuss the valuation, which is ridiculously great from that perspective, but then also debunk something to explain why the valuation is like it is and what are the risks that many in those articles, I think, not see because or they don't know the history or it looks really great on the surface. But if you scratch a little bit deeper, there are some things you need to know. The business, it is a utility, commercial, solar modules, residential, whatever. The sector there expected to grow at 13% per year going forward, including then energy storage growing at 27 per year. So great sector to be in. They have uh, utilities, renewable energies at your doorstep. They have the Chinese segment that is producing all these things that industry behind it, integrated everything, global presence, selling all over the world. I think the largest supplier in the US and really a strong position with producing and everything. And the P ratio is free. If we look at the valuation, especially after the 50% crash, the P ratio is 3.5 for a market cap of 1.34 
billion and a stock price of 20. If we look at earnings, so we have $5, P ratio 4, then as those earnings are expected to grow, as the sector grows and everything, we are looking at the P ratio of 3 or even 2. P ratio of 2 <laughs> compared to the S&P 500 of 25 in a growing sector seems ridiculously low. Plus, they have the Chinese subsidiary IPO completed and they raised a billion. And what is very ridiculous when it comes to valuation is that if you look at the market cap of the Chinese subsidiary, of which I think they own 62%, then you say, okay, who is insane here? So I made the calculation divided by Remimbi's $2, 6.5 billion times 62%. The stake in the Chinese entity is worth, according to the Chinese market, 4 billion. The complete company trading in the States, 1.34 billion. So this is now trading at 30% of just the Chinese subsidiary listing. The rest factories around the world, blah, 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 you get everything for free. So this is insanely cheap, right? I'm not saying this is not a bad investment now. I just want to debunk something and trying to explain why it is cheap. First, when it comes to the growth of the sector, great growth, yes, but the growth since 2015 has been a 5x. So this is expected to double. This was a 5x since 2015. What did the stock do since 2015? It's down 50%. So the first thing you need to know is that if a sector is growing, especially now the talk is about artificial intelligence, two years ago was about drone shipping, uh, robotaxis, whatever. There is always something. Two years ago, it was also about solar, how, I don't know, the toilet will do everything based on solar energy when you go there. So that was the expectations. Stocks were high, especially ETFs. Everyone was investing. It needed exposure. The bubble has burst and we are back to reality, which is the first thing why it's cheap. Secondly, it is a commodity business, so everyone can make those modules. You really don't have advantages. Everyone is investing in growth capacity, capacity, capacity. And when the market turns a little bit, why did the market turn? Interest rates going higher. Three years ago, you had money in the bank, you were getting zero. Now you get four or five percent. Now suddenly putting solars on your roof is not as attractive as doing nothing. That's one. Less demand, they need to produce, they invested in those factories. They already produced, I think they say have a billion and something of inventory in their balance sheet, which is the market cap practically. And then you see this, okay, ups and downs with the stock price too that we see here, that then the market is again reflecting what can happen. And that is risk number one, plus over the last, 15 years, not much has happened except for those investors that invested in really bad times for the solar industry and sold at the right time. No dividend, no nothing. And if you look at the company, really great company, huge revenue growth over the last decade, but you can see that the net income has been minimal, good year, bad year, okay year, and now it looks good for a P ratio of five, but compared to the revenue growth, net income remains flat because of the harsh business conditions where it is just a commodity. There is no competitive advantage, it's just silicones, so... It's very hard to compete. And when everyone makes money, everybody invests and you have these ups and downs. And also key factor here, the technology is always expanding at extreme speeds. So you need to constantly invest the money instead of rewarding shareholders. So it's not really a Warren Buffett kind of business where you put your money and get constantly rewarded. It's a cutthroat business. Plus, 
you wish I would end, right? If you look at the ownership, Dr. Sean Q is the chairman, chief executive officer, everything great, but Han Bing Zhang, maybe you know, maybe you don't know, is his wifey. So that's something. Then if you look at something that I just quickly researched in the annual report, the CEO gave private guarantees for banks for some loans. And on those loans, he gets 20,000 shares. For now, he owns 21% of the shares. I didn't put in the presentation the link to the loans. Not relevant, but it shows you this. This is the most important thing. So 2018, the stock was trading around 18, 15, 18. And in the downturn, the 2018 downturn, what did the 2017 downturn, when solar was a little bit down, what did the... CEO and his wife, Han Bing Zhang Du, well, they wanted to take out everybody else at a consideration of 18 bucks per share. So money in the bank guarantees means that he has more money out of the company than in the company. Chinese, a lot of Chinese investors, minority interests of a billion. It's very complicated for an investor to just go and see what the heck is going on. No dividends, nothing. Are they extracting money through different ways? So it is more, let's say, profitable for them to extract money through various subsidiaries, Chinese investments, Chinese IPOs, uh, Chinese shares of something like that, than to simply pay a dividend if there is investing, buying, purchasing, who knows what the heck is going on. And there is something that we cannot know. Of course, on paper, it looks great. The auditors do not dig that deep because they are paid to have good meanings about the annual report, not bad. If not, you lose your job as the auditor. So I'm just discussing the risks. I'm not saying that there is something, but whenever this happens that the CEO wants to take private the company, when the stock is, let's say, relatively cheap. So here he wasn't happy with the market cap of 1 billion. And he said, I'm going to screw all the other shareholders that bought here, here, and here, and invested, and who knows what. I'm going to take this private. Fortunately, the board didn't allow it. But, okay, he has just 21% of control, but nothing prevents him to try it again here, especially if it goes lower. And so all those that invested in the growth solar trend, whenever, Maybe it goes, you invest now, you think it will rebound to 40, double your money easily on the cheapness here, but then it goes to 15 or 12, and then somebody offers you takeover at 15, and that's goodbye. So for me, the business, it is in an industry that's growing, yes, but the profitability will always be questionable. Where are the dividends? Is the shareholder rewarded or not? For 20 years, he hasn't been rewarded. Or for the last five years, when solar is profitable, no rewards. What is the CEO and his wifey doing? Who knows what kind of clan it is there? Whose pockets are we filling here? That's always the key question. Take over at lower prices. That's a big red flag. Maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't happen. But just to know the risks, and this also explains why it is so cheap because as shareholders don't get any rewards, haven't gotten them for 20 years, then you know there is something that you never know when will this change? When will we see all these cash flows, money coming in, huge dividends? P ratio of two is a dividend of 50%. When will this company pay a dividend of 50%? The CEO is likely rich, has his own money. And uh, that's what I wanted to debunk Contrary to all the buy, buy, buy articles, even at 30, at 40, yes, if you look at it directly, it's extremely cheap, but there are some things there. And you have to see how it fits you. There is always this risk, but I'm not saying that if you buy now, it can't go to 40 in the next solar cycle. It's a growth market, so there will always be exuberance there ahead.
Thanks for watching. This is my opinion. Check what I do on my research platform with more in-depth things that I really like. I'll see you in the next video.